Here are our stories in this week's VA News. A new chief is sworn in to run VA's public and intergovernmental affairs. The Salt Lake City VA Medical Center keeps finding ways to save resources while helping veterans. And from Milwaukee, a stadium filled with veterans and their admirers sets a world record. We'll be back with those stories and more. Hello, I'm Wade Poole with the Office of Information and Technology. And I'm Amber Laskowski with the Office of Information and Technology. Thanks for tuning in. Dr. Tommy Sowers was sworn in on August 20th as Assistant Secretary for Public and Intergovernmental Affairs. With the help of Dr. Sowers' wife, Erica, Secretary Shinseki administered the oath to Sowers again in a ceremony at Central Office on September 18th. Sowers is a decorated 11-year Army veteran with tours in Germany and Kosovo and two in Iraq. Sowers was the Democratic nominee for the congressional seat in his home state of Missouri in 2010. He is a graduate of Duke and has a doctorate from the London School of Economics. If the VA was a Fortune 500 company, it would be a Fortune 10 company. This place is big. But when I think of the VA, I don't think of numbers. I think of people. I think of the people whose lives that are changed and saved because of the work that the people do here in this room. Uh, Life-saving health care through some of the folks in this room. Incredible educational uh, benefits through some of the folks in, the, in this room. Whether it's ending veterans' homelessness, uh, uh, burial rights, the, the list goes on and on. Uh, it's an incredible organization and I'm honored to serve it. The Salt Lake City VA Medical Center spends over $6 million a year to reimburse veterans in remote locations for their transportation costs. Scott Malone takes us to Southern Idaho to show us one way a pilot program is saving VA money while helping veterans make their appointments. We ready to go? I'm ready. Let's do it. The dawn of a new morning in Southern Idaho and that can only mean one thing for driver Mike Miles. Everybody build it up. Time to hit the road, picking up a dozen veterans on their way to the VA facility in Salt Lake City. So this whole route is about three hours? About three hours, uh huh? And you have how many pickups? Well, it all depends. Normally, my, I, normally about four pickups, but I have had up till five. This truck stop in Malad City, Idaho, is the final stop before hitting the freeway for the last hundred miles of the voyage that helps veterans like James Jardine keep their appointments without the wear and tear on their own vehicles. It, it's great, it's great. I, I've driven down a couple times, but had some problems with that, so go ahead and take the bus. For Jardine, a retired Special Forces Sergeant who lives 220 miles away from Salt Lake in Idaho Falls, these trips are a rare opportunity to bond with fellow veterans. There's a hundred stories on this, on a ride down, and, and, and you got you to gotta take those stories in because they're going to be gone one day, you know? Veterans like A.G. Harada have plenty of stories to share. We were there about a month and then they shipped us over to Italy. That's where we really got into fighting. He served nearly 70 years ago in France, Italy and Germany, helping his unit become the most decorated American unit in Europe from World War II. Well, we started from the south, go right on up the boot. That's what they call that. Italy is the boot. From rugged mountains in Italy to Blackfoot, Idaho, and today's trip to Salt Lake, Harada's journey will also make it easier for him and thousands of other vets to keep their appointments. This pilot program has already saved the VA Salt Lake City over $200,000 in the first 18 months. This morning's journey ends three hours after its beginning. At the end of the day, the same group will rendezvous for the return trip all in a day's work for miles and a trip these veterans look forward to sharing. We asked Rich Daisy, the medical media chief at the Milwaukee VA Medical Center, to cover the premiere of the documentary, Field of Honor, which honors our nation's greatest generation. He had no idea he would be covering a world record event at the Brewer Stadium, and it wasn't a baseball record either. Here's Rich. Tailgating on a summer day at the ballpark. It's a tradition in Milwaukee at Miller Park. Over 28,000 people have gathered, but there is no ball game tonight. 
everyone has turned out to view the premiere of the documentary film Honor Flight and to salute veterans of the greatest generation. Ceremony that there is absolutely no earthly way to thank our veterans for the sacrifices they make every day and the freedom that, that we enjoy. But uh, we try anyway, and uh, we dream very big at Stars and Stripes Honor Flight, but this is beyond our wildest dreams. The community has just come through in such a big way. We obviously, we fly World War II veterans at no cost to see their memorial in World War II. It turns out it's much more than going to see those granite memorials. It becomes a fountain of youth for these men and women, a chance for brotherhood and sisterhood and to remember the fallen. And uh, they come back and tell us that it's, it's one of the best days of their lives. World War II veterans like Julian Plaster, Dick Richardson, and Sylvester Walker have been coming to Brewer Games for years in Milwaukee. But today they're here to honor their fellow World War II veterans and share their experience with Honor Flight. Oh, at the airport, Mitchell Field, I asked the same mention of the people, 1,000 people, 10,000 people were there to greet us. Our family, all our members, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, Army, Navy, Marines, Air Force, all stood at attention, saluting us. It was embodied. It really was great. I was in the uh, 15th Air Force, 454th Bomb Group, and we flew out of Italy. So far as this honor flight, this is just fantastic. These people know exactly what they're doing, and they do it very well. I went on the flight in September of 2010. It was just unbelievable, the number of people that were there. It gives you your humbles, boy, when people stay and want to thank you. It, it was wonderful. And uh, all the volunteers, uh, they're so genuine in their welcoming you, you know. Nothing was phony, phony about this. I mean, these, these people were honest in their, in their feelings towards you. Today's program included special messages from local sports heroes, VIPs, and famous Americans, but the highlight of the night was definitely the film, a feature-length documentary about a Midwest community joining together to honor World War II veterans and their legacy. But what Honor Flight does, and what this movie, I think, does, is just remind us of things that are fundamentally good, that, that are, are meaningful, that are powerful. Um, it's also an intellectual experience because I think fundamentally this movie is about freedom. And these men and women so many years ago fought to preserve uh, the freedom that we enjoy every single day. And so this film really, I think, is about not taking what we have for granted and, and being sure that every single day when we wake up, we understand what we have in this country and we cherish it. Fans of all ages enjoyed a night out in Milwaukee. Field of Honor set a new attendance record for a documentary film debut, and everyone got to cheer for some real heroes at the ballpark. The employee education system was recently honored by the Federal Government Distance Learning Association as the recipient of its 2012 Five Star Award. The award recognizes EES for demonstrating excellence in providing enterprise-wide distance learning solutions for the federal government and its employees. Alex Autry, the president of the association, said the award recognizes EES for providing a cost-effective distance learning training solution for medical personnel that sets EES apart in the federal government. Sherry Kramer, VHA's EES Deputy Chief Learning Officer for Business Operations, accepted the award last month at the Society for Applied Learning Technologies Annual Interactive Technologies Conference in Reston, Virginia. That's Association President Autry on the right and Russ Colbert, Polycom U.S. Federal Government Market Director on the left. Did you know, in August, the one million patient used VA's trend-setting blue button to download data from a personal health record, in addition to users of My Healthy Vet and TRICARE online from the government, private sector partners like United Health Group, Aetna, and Kaiser Permanente are adopting it as well. Here's a video produced by one of the partners in the Blue Button Project, the Marco Foundation. My name's Randy Watson. I was born in Southgate, California. I served in the Army for eight years. 
In 1991, stated I had to have emergency five bypass heart surgery. My name is Michelle Straw. I was in the United States Army. I unfortunately came down with gynecological conditions which were very serious. I'm Craig Lohengart. I'm a Navy, a Navy veteran. I contracted a fairly rare disease called primary I have uh, been in the hospital numerous times. I've had eight heart attacks. It's been hard to get access to my private medical records. I was surprised at what my medical record looked like when it was printed out. I got two suitcases full of paper records. I couldn't bring back any of my own personal stuff or clothes because I had to bring back my medical records. I actually had to make paper copies of the lab test and carry them between the four drugs and For the first time ever, veterans will be able to go to the VA website, click a simple blue button, and download or print your personal health records so you have them when you need them and can share them with your doctors outside of the VA. That's happening this fall. What we've done is we've taken the information that you would normally fill out on a clipboard when you went to see your health care provider. And to make this information accessible to them in as easily read, easily transferred, but still very secure and private electronic mechanism means that they don't have to copy you know, telephone book-like or encyclopedias of information and schlep them around with them from one place to another. You can click it to download your allergies to drugs, prescriptions you take, what doctors you see. Take it to your primary care physician or specialist or the emergency room. Instead of having to lay there and answer questions, you can tell them, here it is. It's all here in black and white. It's in order. In 2009, I had to go see a civilian provider. I had some emergency complications from a surgery I'd had in the Army. Because I didn't have the blue button available to me at the time, the provider was not able to treat me because they didn't have all of my medical history. When I was transferring the wheelchair, I felt a lacerating my scalp pretty heavily. Instead of me trying to recite the 15 meds, how often I took them, what I took them for, but I was able to take my iPad out, pull the, my blue button up, and actually hand that to the, the nurse and then the physician. And so they were able to look at the drug drug interaction and choose the right same man for me. We thought maximum there might be 25,000 individuals who would want to try this new technology. We hit 25,000 in less than three months. If I have to have an emergency surgery and they don't know that I'm on blood thinners and they start cutting on me, you know, I'm gonna bleed out. You know, they need to know that I'm on a particular medication that causes my blood to be thin. Having, Having access, access to my medical record. records, I can bring this up to them and I think that would eliminate a lot of the risks to the patients, you know, to their health. Everybody in the country should be able to have access to electronic health records where they can download them at any given time. That's our show this week. Thank you for joining us. I'm Amber Laskowski. And I'm Wade Poole. Have a great day and rest of your week.